Come with me, our subscriber, on a geographically and historically enriching journey from our summer home in Hungry Horse, Montana, to our place in Austin, Texas. Beautiful Swan Valley as we drive through Montana. Almost heaven, West Montana, Mission Mountains, Old Swan. When traveling, I like to get up about an hour before daylight and watch the sun come up over the landscape. It's so beautiful. Often in the prairie, you see these fences erected to prevent the drifting of snow across the freeway. come out with this hairstyle. It's something that you'd see at the Burning Man Festival. I didn't know he was from China. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Lester was from China. Lester's a Filipino. Well, we're getting pretty close to Cheyenne here. What's the line for over there? Flu shots at Wendy's. Oh, I can't have flu shots. <laughs> so, sir, what's the best and the worst part of living in Cheyenne, Wyoming? People and it being a Republican state. That's the best part? <laughs> That's the best part for me. The hunting and fishing is great. Oh, but ain't that America for you and me? What is that thing on the hill anyway? You think it's a buffalo, Mary? Yeah. Looks like a giant buffalo. Statue. It's moving. It's moving. <laughs> right? Maybe it is moving. Well, as we're leaving Cheyenne, the Rocky Mountains are starting to barely come into view here. So, Princeton, what's your theory on the fact that there used to be dinosaurs wandering these arid plains? <laughs> Well, before Noah's Ark, the earth was watered with mist that came up from the ground. And that would be a perfect environment for large reptiles. Before the flood of Noah, there may have been a protective sphere surrounding the earth with the clouds above it. This provided an ideal greenhouse atmosphere for lizards to grow huge. But during the floods of Noah, the rains came from above and the greenhouse effect was gone forever. I'm seeing an eagle in that cloud. Well, as we are leaving Cheyenne here, some beautiful cloud formations in the Rocky Mountains are coming out of here. As far as famous people from Wyoming, Sacagawea, right here, yeah. is one of the most famous. And Jackson Pollock, he's a famous painter from Wyoming. And a little tidbit I knew before even Googling it, is Wyatt Earp had his first job on the Wells Fargo stagecoach, riding shotgun here in Wyoming. That's where the term riding shotgun comes from. But she's still riding shotgun, yeah, she's still the one. I suppose it's true for any guy that's about 12 to 13 years old. When you call shotgun in your friend's car, you're almost willing to fight him. 
You didn't know a president could vote for himself, Princeton? Nah, I never knew that. Well, it's 1.40 and we're almost to Denver. The key to making time is get a good early start. Those first few hours of the morning really go by fast and get you a lot of miles. If you want a 1,000 or 1,100 mile day, get up at about 6 o'clock and hit the road. Take exit 228 to merge onto E470 toward Limon, then keep left. Well, here we are, almost halfway through our journey. I always figured Denver's about the halfway point. I always take this exit to the tollway going through the airport, save some time heading east toward Hayes, Kansas. Well, now we've left Denver behind, and we're headed east to Hayes, Kansas. That's a good looking truck. They've taken pride in that. Look, even the cords are different colors. After driving almost nine hours so far since morning, I'm refreshing myself with a Snow's Cherry Juice, winner of the 2012 Juice Award. Well, I've been watching a little video about Machu Picchu, the ancient city of kings, which is one of the seven wonders of the world. Do any of y'all know what seven wonders of the world are? What'd you find out on Google? It's a great pyramid of Giza, hanging gardens of Babylon, temple of Artemis, and the lighthouse of Alexandria, and the Great Wall of China. China. Yes. Christ the Redeemer, Brazil, Taj Mahal, India. Okay. Colosseum, Italy. Here we are near Oakley, Kansas, and this means a lot to me personally because my grandfather, Buckskin Jimmy Willows, left home at a young age, which many people did in those days. Now imagine a 14-year-old young man finding his way to a ranch in Kansas. I don't even know where he originated. I don't know if he lived not that far away or if he had to hop a train or I don't know if they had hitchhiking back in those days. But I do know there was probably hostile Indians and various other challenges, but somehow or another, he made his way to Buffalo Bill's Ranch. And my grandpa had a lot of moxie and probably strode right in there and said, hey, I want a job. And Buffalo Bill liked Buckskin Jimmy and gave my grandpa a job. So my grandpa worked for him for a, a number of years. And then Buffalo Bill made his first stage appearance in Omaha, Nebraska in about 73. And some eight years later began his Wild West show. And he kept that show going for three decades. And my grandfather was in the show. So a little unclear what my grandfather did in the show, but he was in the show. I've heard two different stories. I heard one story that he rode around on a horse on his head with his great arm strength, keeping him suspended on the horse. And the other story is that he would walk out to a pole that was just a, a pole like this, and with his arm strength, put himself up on the pole and stand on his head on the pole. <laughs> so whatever he did, I'm not entirely sure, but he did work for Buffalo Bill as a 14 year old and he was in the Wild Wild West show. Here's Buckskin Jimmy on the left in his 80s and my father, a Montana homesteader, James Lake Willows. 
Well, we've been traveling over 12 hours now and have gone over 670 miles and we are about 100 miles away from Hayes, Kansas. There's not a whole lot to see out here, to be honest. It's pretty flat and you see some cattle and smell the cattle and whatnot. But we got to keep going a ways to get in our quota for the day because it's a two and a half day drive from Hungry Horse to Austin, Texas. And we should probably knock out near a thousand miles today. We've been playing tag team with the lead all the way through Kansas with this truck, which is called the Purple Cadillac. It's an old Peterbilt that is really well maintained. There's a big Kansas moon keeping us lit. When asked how far it is from Montana to Austin, I always say it's a two Motel 6 drive. You need two Motel 6s to get a little refresher, and then you're there the third day. <laughs> what do you think this thing is, Princeton? A poop stop. Uh, <laughs> like poop cleaning and then the... <laughs> it's for poop cleaning? What do you think it's for, Princeton? I think it's for drying the sewer drain the sewer? Oh, maybe Mary's right. I thought it might be something to do with the oil rig. Here they've got a pit stop island right in the middle of the two lanes of the freeway. You can slide in there and get your frap. It's a very nice McDonald's. I've been in that before. Well, now we are getting closer to Oklahoma. The promised land of Brahms chocolate milkshake. Oh, here's a Brahms. Mix it 222. Yay! What can I get for you today? I need one of those great Brahms chocolate milkshakes, the small one with the whipped cream on it. Chocolate shake with whipped cream? Yes, and we'd like a, a banana set, please. This place is so amazing. They make an outstanding chocolate shake. It's a rather unique system with the way they put the stainless steel on the foam cup and twirl it old fashioned style. Ooh, there it is. There's my beloved banana split in the making. We know how to eat breakfast. Just about ready. Thank you very much. Appreciate that so much. Enjoy guys. Yeah. Well, this morning I'm medicating a little because I gave a valiant effort for two years to keep Montana from being another pot zombie state. We were off to a tremendous start with 60,000 Montanans seeing my posts on Facebook and 61% of them giving me a thumbs up. But then somebody paid off Facebook giving them more money to not show my stuff than I was giving them to show it. And the advertising buck won, I guess. Well, here we are in Oklahoma City. We're Lincoln time. Keep left. Softball capital of the world. There's a sport I love. The USA. Hey, look at the clouds here. Jehu just look like the cotton candy. Does they have a stack on there? And the clouds are gonna look like the cotton. Oh, nice cotton candy. <laughs> At the Oklahoma border, there's lots of casinos because it's illegal in Texas. Well, here we are coming into the Dallas Fort Worth area.